Hello friends, today we are discussing about webhooks. Yes, webhook is a way for your application or app to get real-time data, which means anything changes on the server and you get notified instantly. Now this is different from the traditional approach, where you need to keep polling the server to find out about the changes. Now in this video, we will look into what is webhook, how are they different from the API polling approach and we will set up a webhook to github where we will find out how we can set up webhook on the github and then we will see any changes that we make on github sends the data back to the client application. So coming up. Spread it back. Hello guys, welcome to Help Me Coder, the channel which talks about technology and helps the coder community out there. And in today's video, we are discussing about webhook. Now, as we know, there are a lot of applications out there and these applications need to talk to each other or communicate with each other so that they can help us or other application. For this, we have APIs like webhook or uh, polling mechanism so that they can communicate with each other. To see this, in action, we will go through a small example. Let's take a scenario where I have to fly from Singapore to Malaysia and I need to book a ticket on this. So to do that, I will search on the server to check for tickets which are less than $50. So how do I do that? I log into the airlines portal and then I search for a ticket between Singapore to Malaysia which is less than $50. Uh, I always look for cheap tickets, okay? Now the request reaches the server where it checks for the ticket on the back end. Now it, so once it checks and then it replies to me, okay, I don't have the ticket which is less than $50. All tickets are costly. So I don't take the ticket on the day. I come back another day and I again check for the ticket which is less than $50. So on the day two, again, the server replies me back. Nope, we don't have a ticket, which is less than $50. I tried it again on the third day, which was a lucky day for me. And I requested the server, do you still have a ticket, which is less than $50? And the server says, okay, I got it. So this methodology where client from a client, you request to server and then the server replies you back is called a polling methodology, where you keep polling the server for the information that you request. If the same methodology we follow using webhooks, how do we do that? I don't need to tell the server again and again because over here I will register my number with the server. So I will tell the airline company that here is my number, keep it with yourself. Once you have a ticket which is less than $50, just give me a call back. So here the client registers the number on the server. Now. Once the server has the ticket, it will send you the message, Hi, I got you your ticket. So this way, you don't have to keep polling the server or sending requests to the server asking for a response. Here, the server keeps on looking for you and then when it has that item, it will send you the response back. So this is an approach which we call as webhook. Okay, so now we know the difference between the two. And before we start looking into webhooks in action and see how webhooks really work, let's go back and try to understand how it all really started. So this all started using API, which is application programming interface, and we are all surrounded by them. All the digital experience on the web that you see is all because of these APIs. So these APIs are the hardworking or the heavy lifters. They get the real data for you. We can also call these APIs as SaaS, Software as a Service. So softwares have been exposed on internet or the web by some companies which are used by other people to get their service. For example, these are the companies like Google, YouTube, Flickr, all of them have APIs which are exposed on the web and you can use them to get the data. For example, Google APIs like Google Weather or Google Location is being used 
by companies like Expedia, which helps you find hotels across the world. Even WhatsApp uses Google APIs to find the location of your mobile. Now, Google APIs are used across the web or even many other applications that you see, like example, your ATM machines, where there are APIs of banks which are exposed using, using your ATM machines where you swipe in your card and then it sends you the information about your card details. So this is what is called polling where you provide some in where you require some information you put in your information and then it you hit the server to extract the data. So it is like you ask for the data and then you get response from the server. Now how does these APIs really work? APIs are interface exposed by companies to help you extract the data. So you provide the information into a particular format which the company requires you to do that and once you do that it gives you response into a JSON or any other different formats. So let's see an example. For example this open weather map is a company which exposes some APIs where you can get the weather information of that particular country. So for example they have this API open where you need to pass in this URL with a city name. It will get you all the information about the weather. What is the coordinates? What is the weather right now? It is drizzling. See, for example, light intensity. So this information, then you can use it in your application to work on the same. Now, if polling API can do these many things, then why we need webhooks in first place? There are some scenarios uh, where we do require webhook. For example, uh, if you want to know on an hourly basis uh, if it's going to rain in a particular location uh, or a particular city, then you need to keep polling this weather map API to know if it's going to rain on an hourly basis. So there will be a lot of chattiness on the server. You need to keep sending request to server to get a response back and then in the response you will check whether it's gonna rain or not. Now the other way out is using webhook is you need to sub you will subscribe to this service. So there will be a webhook services through open weather API and where you will tap on and you will subscribe by giving a URL or by some way you will let him know that once there's gonna rain then he will inform you back the server will inform the client back that on the on the subscription channel that you have provided him that that uh, it's gonna rain so you don't have to hit the server again and again to find an information so this these are the uh, places where webhook really comes in so if you want to understand what webhook is a webhook is a http push api which is a way for apps to provide other applications with real time information so uh, there are two things that you need to provide the server before so th there is a setup process for webhooks to work you need to first subscribe by uh, providing a key or the key is something that identifies the client and the server they ties the two and and you know they can authenticate themselves so the client and server gets authenticated using this key so you need to provide the subscription key and the url to the server so this is a one time job once this is done then then the server will keep looking out for the information that you requested and once it gets that it will let the client know about the same there are many different companies who have started using uh, webhook for example you have github which is which is doing a lot of things with the webhook then we have sendgrid which has couple of services um, the couple of webhook services that it gives for example it has a service where you can tap on to know if there is an unsubscribing mail so once it does have the send grid will send you back a response that on to your client to tell you that there is an unsubscription mail or if there is an a bounce mail then it also tells you back to the client that there is a bounce mail so there are a lot of different uh, companies like SendGrid, Twilio, GitHub, Foursquare are they are coming up with these webhooks so this is a very interesting approach of how you <clears throat> work with or how the server client communicate on the web. Now let's take an example of a github webhook where you can subscribe to events like create, delete, commit, fork 
or issues and many more and based on your subscription a payload will be sent back to you whenever that event happens and these payloads can be lot verbose and they contain some key data like what are the event types what is the payload for the event type user who performed the event what is the repository or the organization where the event occurred and then the delivery headers may contain some information like which event that triggered so if we see an example of how this payload look like so i have this issues event payload from github uh, so whenever an issue is opened created or deleted or modified so whenever that happens there will be a payload that will be sent back to the client and it can contain lot of information so this is just a tip of an iceberg that i have added over here but there are approximately 200 more lines to go in this payload so this is how the webhook responds whenever there is an issue created or the, uh, or there is any changes in the issues next we will be looking into how we can connect to github webhook using the azure function and be notified of any issues that happen on the github repository so first i will log in into azure portal over here i will sign in into my account and this is a free account of azure and to know how do you get a free account i have a video on that on my channel so once you login into your account you can look into the current function apps that you have so if i click over here i don't have right now any account any uh, function apps as of now so let's go and create a new one then i will search for compute and then function app in the lower yep though i create on the function app or i will provide the name of the function app which should be not present over here so let me type in function app web azure azure web azure web hook okay now rest of the things will remain as it is i will just yeah rest things as it is let's click on pin to dashboard after this so that it comes on my dashboard so let us click over here and then click on create once we do that it will start deploying this new function app onto your azure portal so it's still deploying it will take some time so now function app is deployed now we can see the all the function apps that are over here right now we don't have so we click on plus icon so this and click on the create function button and over here you will search for github with github javascript something github webhook yeah so this one is with the javascript let's do with the javascript so github webhook javascript which is the one this one and once you click then you can take the name provided so by default one and then you can click on the create so once you click create you will get this boilerplate code over here now if you see there are two things that we require from here the function url and the secret key so i will just copy this information into the notepad so uh, let me copy the function url and then let me copy close it off copy the secret key so this is the secret key between the between the azure and the github which authenticates now once i copy this let's open the github repository so i will go into my github So I've already signed in to my GitHub repository. So let's go into my project for repository where I will be doing the where I will be uh, attaching my webhook. Uh, so let us go into the settings first, 
and inside that there, there is a webhooks option where you can add a webhook over here you need to provide the payload url so you can just go to your notepad so this is the url which will be called whenever there is an event uh, over here so the, you need to subscribe uh, subscription this is a subscription url over here i will choose a json response now i will provide the secret key over here um, so this is a secret key now there are options that you can choose uh, whether you want to everything or you want to choose the type of events over here we will choose some of the events that we want let's uh, let us so these are the different events so let us choose for example issue and all the different issues that are there plus i will add some more like uh, create delete then i will add the webhook so once it gets added so now if you see that the webhook has been added so now there is a link between my azure uh, function and then that webhook so if you want to see how this will work so i will go to the log section over here so anything that gets pushed we can see the event getting fired uh, whenever there is a change happening or any issue getting created there will be a event fired to the uh, function azure the function that we have just created under azure so this is all webhook about so there is a hook that has been already created now we are creating an issue over here inside my azure inside my github so this is for testing purposes now if i go back to my azure portal you see that there is some event that has been thrown from the uh, there is a notification sent from the server side to the client side so client never asked for it but it has been thrown automatically so there has been a function started uh, but there has been some error it's okay we'll try it again so there has been error but definitely we can see that there is an issue there has been uh, event that has been thrown from the server side so webhook is this is what webhook is all about you don't have to keep looking for the events so whenever an issue has been issue created on the github side there will be a event that is fired to that so now let us create uh, give us a comment over here so i will write a comment to that issue so let's see back if that great so now we have a comment so that this is a trigger that I'm, i was talking about so my comment is received over here now let's say uh, let's see again okay cool data so let's see this one if it gets sent back coming back now we have the working webhook get firing events whenever things get changed on the server side so webhooks have provided lot of advantages on how application communicate with each other now i must tell you i have been in love with webhook from the day i learned about them i know after watching this video you must be also in love with them do let us know your story of webhook and how do you use it in your current development or how you plan to use in your future development do remember to like and subscribe our channel help me coder because your likes and subscribes keep us motivated and going so that we can produce awesome content in future do provide your comments if any in the comment section below thanks for watching and happy coding